Welcome back to our virtual celebration of Easter on the Farm 2021 at the Pennsylvania German Cultural Heritage Center at Kutztown University. In our next segment, enjoy a behind the scenes visit to the studio of Eric Claypool, barn star and hexine painter of Lenhartsville, where he and fellow hexine painter Andrew Shirk of Hamburg will demonstrate their painting techniques and showcase current and past artistic works. I'm barn star and hexine painter Andrew Shirk from Hamburg, Pennsylvania, here in Eric Claypool's home studio, where we just finished painting this beautiful Milton Hill inspired barn star for the Pennsylvania German Cultural Heritage Center's Easter on the Farm. Well, hello, my name's Eric Claypool. Uh, we are gonna demonstrate a design of the Milton Hill Star that we picked out of the book, Painter of the Stars. And my friend and apprentice, Andy Shirk, is also gonna be painting this with me. So we're gonna do different, different filming from different parts on both of us working on this star. So the 16-point star was said to represent prosperity. Uh, this has a 12 point, 12 dis point design around the outside, uh, one of Milton's signature borders, so we're going to have fun working on this. up in his house this was my dad's old studio so I learned from my father you know as kids we grew up learning to paint hex signs helping my father helping him paint barns cleaning milk cans things like that so I took over his business back in 1996 uh, he passed away sadly in 2004 but I kept the studio I kept his artwork going One of the fun things was helping my father paint barns in the summertime. What year did you paint your first farm? I'm going to say 1972, which would have made me 11 years old. It was the summer of 72. It was a white barn on Route 737 outside of Kutztown. I believe it had four eight-point stars across the front, a couple of half stars above some of the doors, and the gable end each had a, an eight-point star. And then in 74, we did one in Kempton area, on 143 on the way to Kempton. They were six-footers, they were 12-point stars. And that barn hasn't been repainted since and still looks good. So, I started painting. I believe the last barn I left my father to work on was in 1995, and it was a hill star that he was painting. And it was a barn out on Onyx Cave Road, outside of Virginville.
probably painted my first hill store or helped my father paint the first hill store I'm going to say 92 or 93 at a barn in Eastport. Uh, that's my best guess. Like like a hill store like that. Yes. Or do you it was my dad's when, version. It had a lot more shades of blue. Do you remember when you painted over something that you thought you wanted to help in the last 20 years is when I started noticing working on hill stores. Thing. It was a hill design. It was outside of Virginia. The barn has since burned down. Yeah, it's a shame. But it had five stars across the front. And there were a lot of bowls there. And I said, I'm not putting my ladder in the, the bowl dome until you move the bowls inside the barn. And we did. When did your dad meet Johnny on? 1962. So the story goes, he saw in an ad in the newspaper that Johnny Ott wanted an apprentice. And, you know, the many years I've been working the Folk Festival, I have met half a dozen or more people that told me they were one of Johnny Ott's apprentice. Some have showed me neck signs that were really good. You know, my dad's story was, he saw an ad in the newspaper that Johnny Ott wanted an apprentice. He was a welder, a tradesman, you know, he drove the back roads to Leesport. Of course, that's all it was, back roads. And he would see born stars and he'd be fascinated by them. We had ancestors that lived up in this area, and that's what attracted my dad to come out of Upper Darby and move up to Brooks County. So your dad would effectively drive by Milton Hill's barn stars? He probably easily could have. You know, I don't know which roads he always took. They were all back roads, they were all dirt roads. You know, you cop one flat tire every week, pretty much on average. So... His story is, he went in to see Johnny Ott, whether he called him first or no, I don't know. And Johnny Ott said, bye buddy, you're on. Well, I saw this ad in the paper, you were looking for an apprentice. Ah, you just want to make money like everybody else. And then I was like, well, man, if that's the way you feel, we'll leave. He said, you get back here. He said, I want $3 every half hour and I want to be paid every night. And according to my father, they got along great and they never charged him a dime. And then he says on Johnny Ott's deathbed, I guess he was out at the Phoebe home. He said, look, I want you to take over my business. And I said, well, I'll never be as good as you. He says, listen to me, young man. He says, you got something there. He said, you just stick with it. He said, It'll take you a long way. Okay. He just said it to make him feel good, but you know, of course, he stuck with it. He took over Johnny Ott's spot at the Folk Festival. And he's been there until 2004, but you know, I'm still there. Of course, there wasn't a Folk Festival this year and, or last year. You know, Johnny Ott had a fertility sign, and my dad did the same. He did a lot of very similar designs because he learned from Johnny Ott. So, you know, he got to use them. Of course, he changed a bunch of them, made them his own, so they didn't exactly look. But, you know, you can't fake Johnny Ott anyhow. So, Johnny Ott was a great artist. Uh, his signs were very unique. My dad's were different. But... I have five of those Sun Rain Fertilities with all the different signature, but the story on that was that uh, somebody asked Johnny Ott for a fertility sign, you know, Sun Rain and Fertility, they wanted rain, it was a drought back in early 60s, late 50s, I don't know. 
So John Yacht made him the sign, and then the great flood of the Delaware River happened, and everybody's place got washed out along the way. And the guy said to Johnny, hey, I wanted some rain. I didn't want a flood. And Johnny Yacht said, well, you just forgot to take it in, you know. So Johnny Yacht was a storyteller, you know. He added a lot of meanings and representations, and, you know, everybody wants to know what they mean, what they represent. So I got asked that question all my life at the Foot Fest. What do they mean? What do they mean? And I finally got to a point and said, this is what they represent. I feel they're symbolic. There's a lot of representations. A lot of the designs represent positive things to the Pennsylvania Dutch. So thank you for what it's worth. My dad would say, you know, he was asked about, hey, we can't have kids. We hear you can paint a fertility sign. And my dad would say, hey, I'm not a prophet, I'm an artist. So on average, I paint three, four borns a year, sometimes five, sometimes six. Uh, for the last 20 years, we've been working with the Dutch Hex Tour, where they will pick one of my borns to cover half of the costs. You know, it has to be a visible born that you see from the road. So that's that's a really good feature in, uh, in Berks County. And I believe I have, closing in on 100 borns, I'm sure I'm around 90 at this point. Uh, we try to document each one, but, uh, you know, trying to find time to do that sometimes isn't always there. So it's fun to talk about, you know, and it's fun to revisit and go back and look at some of the barns that you painted over the years.
Milton Hill definitely knew his geometry. He was the master of making the Born stars have the spinning effect. You know, we believe his first Born star was in 1902, I believe, and he was probably 13 at the time when he painted his first Born star. Uh, so my father, who learned from Johnny Ott, Johnny Ott was a self-proclaimed doctor of hexology, and he added a lot of the hearts and birds and tulips to the designs. And those designs actually came from their old fractor art. So everything represented something positive to the Pennsylvania Dutch. They were very colorful. They enjoyed painting many, you know, things, chairs, blanket chests, you know. A lot of the old blanket chests from the 18 and 1700s had unicorns on, which were said to represent virtue and piety. Why they painted unicorns on, we don't really know. But there's a lot of old designs that, uh, you know, with fractor art and angels and butterflies. But what's used a lot today is the distal fink, some of the lovebirds, hearts and tulips. You know, tulips representing faith, hope and charity, hearts representing love. So we have found many old barn stores that did have hearts on. We found a couple that had tulips on. I believe there was an 1827 born up near Slatington that had a tulip in between. You'll find these designs on the back of gravestones from the 1700s. So your first born stars were actually painted on wood that was inlaid into the stone gable ends of barns. So today we call them gable end recesses. Eventually they were transformed to the four bay, the front of the barn, where you see four or five across the front. Most, most times it's the same star. Sometimes the middle star is a little different. Sometimes the two center stars are a little different, but pretty much the same pattern across. You know, same, the gable end may be different, the gable end may be the same. But, you know, on the average, a lot of big barns had six barn stars on, four in the front and one on each gable end. A lot were decorated fancier than that, where they had a bottom deco edge, you know, the bottom of the four bay had a, had a design across the front of the barn for maybe like a foot high for the whole span of the barn. You know, I call it a deco edge, you know, whether there's other names for it. Uh, so the barns were, you know, that was their focal point of their life. You know, they treated them like, you know, that was their life, you know, is where they did their animals were kept or, you know, their grain was kept in there. So some people believe that that was like a giant blanket chest where they decorated blanket chests. So they decorated their barns. Others believed, you know, the hex signs were superstitious. Personally, I think they're just very symbolic to the Pennsylvania Dutch, you know, so whether they're good luck, good health, prosperity, you know, there's many, many reasons. None of this was ever written down and we will argue forever on what they actually mean.
What we have here is a ghost barn store from 1840. This was painted directly on the barn. When I found this and I saw wet hay laying on it, I kicked it around a little bit and I saw this really cool border and I thought, wow, there's a ghost there. So I talked to the owner and they're like, hey, take them if you want. Well, fortunately these two fit together for a half of a barn store. So what I saw when I was looking was this really cool border. So what this is, is a five foot, eight point star. This is your very common eight point star in Berks County. It has 30 degree star points. It has seven inch rosettes. And the fascinating thing about this, the geometry is very, very fascinating. What it is, is I'm gonna show you right here what this would look like. This is one I just recently painted. So when I talk about the geometry involved in it, when you measure straight across the diameter and divide by seven, you end up with two sevens on each star point. Your center pinwheel was three sevens. And what that does is give you a perfect 30 degree star point in between. So I think it's a very fascinating process of how they laid out this design. Uh, got rosettes in between. This same border is what I have on this one. It's an old style deckle border is what I call it, but it's just fascinating the way it works out. So growing up painting barn stores, we started finding these ghosts and we talked about them, talked about them and how do they get this raised effect? Well, I figured it was all the overlapping paint, you know, creating differences, raised differences for edges, you know, for paint lines, raised lines here. Well, when I got this ghost, I studied it. I looked at it. I figured out the angles, you know, that they're all 30 degree star points. I believe the first thing I did and thought that's how they did it was lay this 30, 60, 90 right on the straight edge across the diameter. And it gave me the outside angle of the star. So I thought, ah, that's how it works. And what it does, it makes a perfect 30 degree star point. After a while, we were still discussing ghosts and how some of these designs were laid out and I started playing out with the number seven. So what I figured out then was when I measured the diameter straight across, divide by seven, your intersecting pinwheel, divide that out, you had two sevens, the pinwheel's three sevens. So I looked at this ghost more and more and more. And as I said, I thought the overlapping paint lines was what caused the perimeter lines, but what this told me, this was scribed. Scribing is a tool that we use. It is two tremble points. You can adjust this. You can make your circle. This can make up to a six foot, six foot circle. You know, and what it does when you scribe, you condense the wood. You just make a little, you're not scoring it. You're just condensing it. And what that does is harden it just that little bit. So this process of what they used, it was bare wood. They scribed the whole design in there. So if you look really closely and feel this, there's a raised line on the outside of the star points to create the, where the border starts and then where the border ends. So what happens here, we figure it was probably a weak whitewash that was on here. Uh, then they painted their strong colors for the star points. And these were just basic stripes. You know, you had a scribe line on the outside, a scribe line on the inside of the border. And they did what I showed on this design, this curved deckle triangular border edge. You know, it's an old style border. So what happened here, the reason I came up with that theory is you can look closely and you can see the original ghost lines of the red paint going around the circle. I figured the whole thing was painted red. They put a white coat on and drew out their design, but this told a whole different story. Somewhere along the line, this got painted red again, but it had to be 50, 60 years later. You know, as I said, it was an 1840s barn and this came off the barn and I'm going to say 1920 probably. So this hasn't seen daylight in a hundred years. What they did is tore the siding off. They used it on a ceiling for the standing seam roof. They used it on the floor of the four, the extended four bay. And that's where I found the boards. So what they, they put new siding on the barn and this stuff just got kind of left aside. So to me, it's like a museum piece. 
but you can feel it. The relief is close to an eighth of an inch, you know? So I decided, you know, talking with Patrick for two years, maybe on how ghosts perform, you know, he helped me paint a lot of barn stars. I came up with a theory of the scribe line was a very important part. And I always wanted to make one, but I figured it would take 50 or 60 years. So in the process of that, I decided I'm going to try and make some. So here is one of mine. These are three stars. This was a cypress board. It was plain flat. And what I did was I painted half of the star points. So on that, then I painted that was with a white enamel. And then I put, I, I'm sorry, it was with a white latex. And that kind of sealed the wood so my white enamel would not leach out into the wood. So then I painted all the star points. The center one was black. Oh, this one was black too. This was the only white one. And after this was out since 2014, I had it on a roof about a 412 pitch, getting full sunlight all day long, getting beat up by the sun and rain. First thing that happens is the wood turns gray and it starts degrading as we call it. Uh, then over the years, over the years, it degrades more and more until you have a good 16th inch of relief. So when you feel this one, you feel how the wood degraded back. You know, another theory of that is as bees chew at the soft grain to make their paper nests. So I've seen a lot up in my field, I've seen a lot of bees chewing at some of this wood, make you know, to make their paper nests. You know, wasps, hornets, uh, yellow jackets, things like that. So this one is a simple eight point star, similar to this, just a solid border. We got a 12 point star in the center. 12 point star was said to represent the 12 apostles. The eight point star was associated with marriage and fertility. And the 16 point star was associated with prosperity. So I have many ghost projects. I call them projects because each time I would try to evolve them, so to speak, I would try a different process. So the second process was that I took a, a latex uh, urethane and I sealed it with that. Well, what happens with those after three or four years and, and the design starts coming out, the paint starts peeling off quicker. So what that told me was, if somebody wanted a ghost that had no paint on, I could use that process.
So we were talking about the uh, Johnny Ott stories and some of my father's stories. And, you know, I just wanted to show you the sun, rain, and fertility sign. So obviously you have the sun and rain in here, the raindrops and the fertility. You know, when I people see this at a folk festival, some of the women go, oh, no, we're done. I don't want it. I said, no, it's fertility of the crops, fertility of the animals. So Johnny Ott had a story, you know, about a great flood that somebody was going through a drought and they wanted him to make a sun rain of fertility so they could get some rain for their crops so Johnny Ott made a sign similar to this and then this great flood happened in the Delaware Valley and you know a lot of people lost a lot of things and a guy called Johnny Ott and said hey I wanted some rain not a flood and Johnny Ott said well you forgot to take it back inside so you know stories like this passed down so my father, one time at the folk festival, he has, you know, this couple hanging out around the stand and they waited around a little bit till nobody else was there. And they came up and said, hey, you know, we hear you have a fertility sign and, and we're trying to have kids and, you know, it's not working out. So we'd really like you to paint us a fertility sign. And I, my dad said, hey, I'm just an artist. I'm not a prophet. I'll make you the sign. You know, it's mind over matter, you know, but I'll make you the sign. So, you know, about six, seven years later, he's at the same spot at the folk festival and he sees this couple standing around with a hex sign of his and they wait till everybody leaves and then they come up and say, hey, do you remember us? He says, well, no, I see a lot of people, but that's my sign. And they said, yeah, we wanted one, not a half a dozen. So, <laughs> you know, stories like that happen, you know, whether they're flavored a little bit, you know, that all goes with the show. So, uh,
So we're going to talk a little bit about Johnny Ott's Irish Hex. You know, the legend of Johnny Ott would tell that the Irish soldiers painted shamrocks on the Dutch soldiers' barracks during the Civil War. And they danced around and said, hurrah for the Irish. We ain't very much but a darn sight better than the Pennsylvania Dutch. You know, so I'll explain this sign a little bit. Uh, everybody know what the four-leaf clover stands for? Stands for God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and the devil himself. So the three-leaf clover is supposed to stand for God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. He has a little snake in one of the tulips. That's just like temptation from the devil. Everybody goes through temptation. You know, some of the things that are really unique about Johnny Ott, his work is kind of primitive, but it's really nice and it's hard to fake. You know, we always kind of laugh about the headdress is pointing this way on one bird and then they point back on the other bird. There's times one bird's a little bit higher than the other bird. You know, he laced the tulip really nice. The tulip, no, that's like a heart. He laced the heart really nice, you know, so... That's one of the ones I have. I just wanted to show you some Johnny Ott. This is a sign that we painted for Easter on the farm. Milton's signs on the barn were very geometrical. They were fascinating designs. He was the master of giving the spinning effect on his barn stores. When he started painting on discs in his later years for the folk festival, his designs got really complex. You know, so this is one that we kind of reproduced where he has some rubbed out paint in areas. He has a lot of striping done around the outside, you know, but these are different colors for the star points. There were different patterns. He was the master of making colors flip flop back and forth, you know, three different layers from red to orange, red to vermilion to orange. Uh, you know, his designs became very complex and some of them I don't even want to try. I didn't want to try this, but I did, and I liked it, you know, so I intend to make more similar, you know. His designs really, the geometry is just fascinating for what Milton Hill did. Okay, we are going to do a welcome sign right now. I'm going to use this compass to draw my border.
Okay, here we are. We're gonna stripe this welcome sign. Gonna put a black stripe around that, do a little on the tulips and sign it. So shouldn't be that long. Okay, there you have it. Finished welcome sign. Start to finish. Distal finks represent prosperity. Tulips represent faith, hope, and charity. Hearts for love. All your borders are smooth sailor to love. And there you have it. Thanks for watching, but don't go away. Coming up next, join Rachel Yoder in her studio for a folk art celebration of Easter and springtime tradition. Cultural programming for this virtual celebration of Easter on the Farm 2021 is brought to you by the Pennsylvania German Cultural Heritage Center at Kutztown University, the hub of Pennsylvania German culture and language. Visit us online at www.kutztown.edu backslash pgchc. 
thank you to all of our viewers, supporters, and friends. Mia Zala Grostock, zu alle unser Guka, ohne Schitze und Freund. Max gut.